not somewhere else. You had a lot of choices. You could have mingled around or been waiting for lunch now after this or could have attended one of these sessions. You also had a choice to go to either track 1, track 2 or track 3. But you decided to come here. So you made a choice. All our life we are making choices. So the session is about why do we make certain choices over others? What drives it? And why do we need to even try to improve? And can we improve at the last moment or do we need to prepare? So it's all tied up. This is a wow framework which I have been building for last year or so. First I practice it myself. Then I, I work with Impetus. So we have a large number of project teams and our product teams. So tried that with them. It seems to be working. So I thought this may be a good forum to come and share whatever I have found and our teams have found useful. Give me a minute. Give me, I think. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Does it make sense? Four hours out of six hours just sharpening the axe, but it matters. Because once we have sharpened the axe, then the cuts will be very smooth. We'll be able to do it faster and get more output. So quality, agility, and productivity, everything goes up with good preparation. Now prepare for what? And a lot of things we need to prepare for. Life is uncertain. Things go as expected. They also go quite often not expected. So today's session is not about how to prepare for what is expected. Let me take an example. You come to office from home, driving on the way. You found starting at a particular time is good enough for you to reach office in time. On a particular day, it might happen that there is some traffic on the road more than expected and time is running out. You have to reach in time. You find it important to be there on time and it is slipping up. So it was something we had not expected. Now is not the time to start preparing for it. A lot of things we could have done earlier. So what are those kind of things? And there can be variety of ways things can go wrong. All of you must have heard about Murphy's law. If things can go wrong, they will go wrong and at the worst possible time. So there are hundreds of ways things can go wrong. If there is one way, it will go right. So we'll focus on things, more generic things, what we can do to prepare ourselves much better to handle any kind of such uncertainty. Now, WOW is the framework which I have been building as I said and rest of the session I will be going over those details. WOW is really for a short form for way of working. So, What does it involve? It has front end and back end. Front end is what we can observe. Like for example, what are the actions we are taking? We start at a particular time to leave for office. 
Now today suppose there is the meeting was very important and we have got to be there. If you are late by even a minute, it will be noticed. We will feel awkward walking into a room where meeting has already started. So a lot of things can happen. In spite of that, as a habit, we left the home at the same time as earlier. Things prior to that, whatever time what we got up, had breakfast or prepared children for school or whatever, we kept on doing the same thing. So we get so habituated to doing things because they normally work. But on a particular day, it is important to reach in office, we could have probably started thinking of other things. Actions are what we take ourselves, interactions are how we interact with each other. So all the visible part of it is mostly made up out of actions and interactions. Emotions are also very important. They are visible definitely to us. If I feel bad, I will know about it. If you feel bad, probably it will show up on your face. I can see it. So all actions, interactions and emotions are the three visible building blocks of the WOW framework. But why do we act or why do we interact in a particular way? Because at some point in the past, we made a decision that that seems to be a good way of working based upon the situation we are in. And it kept on working. So it was like a master decision which kept on printing out copies of our actions and interactions. And we get habituated to it. It becomes our second nature. It's not so easy to change. And more than the decisions, what is driving the decisions is really the opinions. That's the crux of our framework. That our opinions, our values, our beliefs, and our assumptions are at the back of everything else. So let's see how these five pieces fit together. We start with understanding our actions and interactions. What is driving them are our decisions. I already said that either explicitly or implicitly we had taken some decisions in the past and those are resulting into the actions or interactions that we take today in a similar situation. Now behind that are, as I said, the opinions which consist of the assumptions, beliefs and values. Let me take the earlier example of driving from home to office. Suppose if I have a value that I always respect reaching on time absolutely on the dot. So that value will drive a lot of other things. There may be other person. I have seen people who walk into a meeting five minutes late. They think that others are waiting. That's okay for them. It doesn't matter to them. They are important. Unless they come, their meeting will not start. So for them, they don't value as much reaching on time. So values are driving the rest of it. I may believe that I will reach there on time because I have always reached on time. But that belief may not come out to be true. Now what could be the assumption? The traffic on the road would be as normal. It may not be. Now I need to check that assumption if it is an important for me to reach an office. So what kind of things I could have done? I could have probably looked at the newspaper or looked at on my uh, mobile app, how is the traffic on that road or heard on the FM radio. There are a variety of ways I could have known if it is so important for me to reach in time, right? So. So far we had seen the other four parts, but these opinions, assumptions, beliefs and values also lead to emotions. If I want to reach there on time, but not able to reach on time, so anxiety will start. Probably the frustration will be there. I may call up somebody in the office, has the meeting started? So I am getting worried. So all those emotions are starting because of the opinions I have. And those in turn affect my decision. If I am in a bad mood, 
if i have negative emotions i'll be kind of stuck in those and will not get, take good decisions mature decisions whereas if i am in a positive frame of, frame of mind or emotions i'll be able to do that so all these five are correlated and what i will be taking couple of examples from i have plenty of such examples where i can do walk through but i have chosen two examples because of a short time today but before that let's look at it whose way of working are we interested in is it just our way of working no because we are all connected with each other we have to understand about other person's way of working all of us most of us are from software industry using agile have some clients or have some customers to deal with so unless we understand their way of working in the same way we understand our way of working it will be incomplete will be only inward focus we need to understand others way of working and more importantly we also need to understand the systems way of working because we and they are again part of a system so it's very nice saying is there that we are prisoner of a system we don't understand it's very true because what happens is unless we understand the system we don't know what options we have and unless we know the options our choices are very limited so it's like a prisoner it doesn't have any freedom except for probably the vip prisoners they have lot of freedom but most of the others have hardly any freedom that characterizes the prisoners so we become the prisoners of the system so we need to understand how systems work also so as i said if you notice right from morning to night lot of things are going through our life but we tend to get used to a certain way of working maybe work in a half days way not really look at what is happening and if we when we are in problem then start thinking about it so as i said i'll take two examples one from life at home and one from office and walk through this steps before applying wow and after applying wow does it change anything and before we close i'll provide you with couple of tips of how we can practice these things and get better and better can i have a bottle of water please thank you any questions so far are you with me the so first situation is i won't read out you can have a look and it's more of a pattern it's a pattern of competitive comparison we see that often even in office two team members team leaders prefer seems to be preferring one over the other because his performance is better how does the other person feel so it's not limited to only this context which i'm talking but wherever there is a competitive comparison same kind of pattern comes up so we could start anywhere out of these five buildings up let's start with the emotions look at it from the person who is being always criticized or compared against his superior brother or sister so he may start feeling hatred or he may get depressed or both now what was the decision that it results to do whatever it takes to just get out of this uncomfortable situation right so the actions and interactions will be driven by this decision so who is causing this parents relatives will keep on comparing keep on criticizing you why are you not better he is so good and so on so avoid them get out of this situation or i have seen cases where 
the person has gone to the extent of causing physical harm to his sibling. It's not a good situation. And what is leading to all this? Our opinions. Bad luck. Can't do anything. Past life, I might have done something bad. Therefore, now I am getting all this. So I should do something now so that next life will be better. What about here today? Or it could be everybody wants to look good to others, but now it has become so overpowering that you can't think of anything else. So you need to now get out of this. So start applying way of working approach. So emotions was the main. Challenging part, so we start from there. What kind of emotions we want to have? We desire to be loved. We want to feel worthy. We mean the person who is feeling inferior. Now, if we start from there, then what needs to be done? Nature has created diversity. It's not that everybody has all. I mean, one person has all these strengths and other person has nothing. everybody has his own strengths so rather than worrying about what the person doesn't have or has not been able to develop why not start looking at these strengths and focus on them once that decision is taken it's good to understand any opinions need to change so it means that i must first understand what are my real needs is looking good to others is my real need or feeling happy feeling worthy feeling loved is my real need so if that is my real need then i need to act differently so maybe i focus on my strengths naturally there will be better results i start showcasing them right i will feel more confident and then i in my interactions i also become more open to others be open to parents try and understand their needs even the person who is considered superior has his own challenges he has certain inhibitions so i must take care of those also if i can do that i'll develop a good relationship with him if i am able to understand parents need maybe they want to see their children grow up better all all of them so they are after that but once we understand that we can do something about it. what we can do may change from situation to situation now come to office this is a second situation have you come across these cases earlier any time i have actually seen it in couple of all projects so i thought i'll include this here so we don't have to necessarily start from the same point now we can start from decision so what was the decision probably that was there which resulted in our behavior so given that there was a protective person we are comfortable even if our performance was not that good or we made some mistakes he was there to protect us from others he was taking care of us so we continued to be comfortable as a result we totally depended on that person we did not cultivate other channels because after he is gone we have to deal with others but we didn't do that we did not anticipate the risk that was action on our part lack of action and what was the at the back of all that our assumption that the person will be always there it cannot be and other possible belief is that others are responsible to take care of us so he is there he'll take care of us we don't have to worry so we need to change so where do we change start asking ourselves what if because there are two kinds of reasons why we are successful today 
it is because of R capabilities or it is because of external factors. In this case, it is clearly an external factor. We could change. So once we understand or once we decide that hereafter we will start asking question, even if today it seems to be going well, is it because of us or is it because of things which we are not under control? So we will look at the impact, we will start building alternate channels and the driving force, driving change which has happened is we accept that we are responsible to take care of ourselves. And once that happens, we will be more confident and feel in control. So if you look at both these situations, they are just patterns. So we need to start looking at finding certain patterns of things and it could happen, same kind of situation could happen at home, at office, in our social circles, anywhere. But once we do this, then there is a possibility of change, changing our way of working. But that again is not easy, just by saying it does, doesn't happen because our existing way of working has become a habit. So first we need to break that habit and form a new habit. So for which we have to start acting in new way and once that becomes successful, automatically our way of working will change. So as I mentioned, couple of things I have found very useful, our teams have found useful are, before that, what should we be prepared with? Because we need some frame of reference. So we need to be prepared with information, know-how, skills, resources and a lot of stamina, physical and mental stamina to be prepared. So why I am mentioning this is the next two tips are very generic. But if we find that there is a need to change, what do we need to change? What do we need to get prepared? We can look back here and refer to this as a frame of reference. So for any success, big or small, as I said, why we are successful? Normally what is our tendency? We feel good, we pat ourselves on the back or pat our colleagues on the back, celebrate and move on. But is it because of our capabilities or external factors. And if it is because of external, what needs to change within us? Even for failures, why did we fail? If there is a bug, we always do an RCA. But it is always focused outside. Was there a problem with the server? Something wrong with our test? Or our practice is bad, processes are bad or what? But are we lacking somewhere internally? Are our assumptions creating some of the problems? Are our beliefs creating problems? Is it resulting in wrong, wrong kind of decisions? So that is where we can start thinking. And one very useful practice I have found is call out whether we know something or we assume something. Because a very large number of times we tend to mix up facts and assumptions. So the moment you start saying, I know this, to yourself as well as to others and encourage others to do the same. Automatically followed by what is the basis on which we know this. So it turns out that what we thought as a fact is actually a assumption. And the moment it is an assumption, we need to verify. Other two I will just skip right now because I can see we are already behind time. So I just wanted to share with you that uh, the WOW framework which I am building has the WOW core what we talk today. There is a lot of guidance material, there are seven universal principles and number of uh, useful patterns are there. So I have put up a site called wayofworking.org. You can go there and see there is a good FAQ. So if you are more interested in this, you could send me a mail. I am actually working for Impetus, a software company. I have been there for last 16 years, last one year as an external consultant now. 
focusing on agile and wow so i do all the trainings as well as coach the teams to do their assessment find where are the gaps and i have started now using the wow also within that thank you